The fitness industry markets before and after. My body once looked like this and now look at me. But what does the fashion industry have to show for transformation? Does a customer before and after even exist for buying and using your products? You're listening to Street Cred, the show focused on helping clothing brands turn their audience into a community. I'm Elijah Delport. It's really important to me that I understand the true significance and meaning of business because there's a lot of talk uh, in the business space of, of making money. There's very little talk on positive transformation. And so that's why I think I'm a big fan of Simon Sinek's work because he, I mean, that's really his whole thing. He wrote some books, The Infinite Game, Start With Why. It's about having purpose and understand that we're not in business just to make money. That's rather a means to an, an end. The, the money is the means so that we can bring about greater purpose and greater transformation in the world. And that's something that's really, that's deeply important to me. Um, and so I, I, that's why it was also really important to me in starting this company that I had a real clear sense of what the purpose was. And so it, it's taken me some time, but I think I've got there in that the purpose is transforming brands into communities. That is the, that is the transformation that's taking place. We're going from selling a product to selling an idea and bringing together people and, and why like what's the actual transformation inside like the, the actual real world transformation is belonging accountability and progression because i think we can go further together and if 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 we can build brands that are really communities then what we have is belonging customers like there's more loneliness than ever and so customers feel like they have a place to belong. There's accountability. There's people that want to achieve things and they don't know how. In fact, it, it, you know, there's nothing, I don't think there's anything that separates those that are wildly successful from the everyday person in terms of their biological construct other than the fact that they have the systems around them to get to where they want to go. It's just accountability. So we have that in community and finally progression. And in belonging, we feel like we have a place, accountability, we can do the things we need to do, and as a result, we have progression. That's why I believe community is such a positive transformation. The question is, I mean, if this is my transformation that I hope to be bringing to the listeners of this show, to people that are in touch with my work, the question is, what is the transformation that you are bringing to your customers? I used the example at the beginning the, the fitness industry is very clear. It's a before and after. You're fat and now you're skinny. You know, and you, you've got fat and now you've got muscle, right? I mean, <laughs> like it doesn't get clearer than that, I, I don't think. Um, but for clothing, I mean, it's like I, I... What's the trend? Like I was naked and now I'm clothed? I mean, that's not much of a transformation, right? So it's a big question. Like what is the transformation you as a clothing brand can actually bring to your customers? Um, and... And, and I think before we get there, I, I want to lay out some very practical ways that you can think about bringing transformation to this world, real positive transformation. Uh, before we get there, I, I want to talk about the fact that if you aren't bringing transformation, what value are you bringing? If we think about money as the exchange of value or a vessel in which we use to exchange value, then we got to consider if we want to earn some money, what value we bring. And the value we bring is always in problem solving or another word for that is transformation. So there was a situation that someone was dealing with that wasn't desirable and then now it is desirable and now it is a pleasant situation. And that period of change in between is a transformation and that is where the exchange of money happens. That's the only time money is exchanged, is, is in transformation, is in solving a problem. Like no one buys anything if there isn't a problem or, or, or I should say a perceived problem. That is the only time, seriously. And it, and it doesn't matter what product it is, there is always a problem to be solved. Even if it's something for fun, what you're solving is boredom, Right? Even even if it's something that doesn't is not a is a want status 
not a need status, uh, 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 bought on a want basis, not a need basis. The pro- there's still a problem. The problem is is belonging. It's status. It's you know like whatever it may be. But but the problem. But but the reason why we're starting with this question is of if you aren't bring if you aren't transforming customers, what are you, what value are you bringing? Is because it's that's a real question. Like there is no value without transformation. And so if you want to be a clothing brand that creates real value for real people, then you, goodness, you better be thinking about transformation. So now we've established that transformation is necessary. The question is what transformation are you bringing to your customers? Because chances are it's not nakedness to being clothed. Um, In the developed world anyway, that's not a super necessary transformation. It's, It's not a real urgent problem. If you understand what I'm saying, like that's a, that's a real problem in particular developing parts of the world that don't have access to resources to be able to clothe themselves or maybe places with real homelessness. And don't get me wrong, like there's developed countries with crazy issues of homelessness. Um, however, for most people, people and the markets that they're serving that's not the transformation that they're offering it's not just like oh you needed a a t-shirt in your wardrobe because you literally didn't have a t-shirt to wear on thursday like for most people that's not why they're buying your product um and so the, the so then the question remains what transformation are you bringing in other words what value are you bringing so it's all about your clothing brand is about getting your customers from point A to point B. And this is what I like to call an aspirational identity. That's the point B. This is why it's important to discuss brand identity and target audience because the point A and point B differs depending on your brand identity and your target audience. And so let me give you an example. And this is this is what I'm talking about. When I say transformation, this is what we're talking about. And this is where your value lays. And by the way, if you can get to the point where you really understand the transformation you're bringing, you can start con- you can start communicating value in a different way, and that's going to give you a leg up on the competition in your industry because they don't know how to communicate value like you do. So so here's an example. Patagonia, the environmental brand their customer point a right this in other words the starting point who their customers are when they first approach the brand are everyday people and they're not sure how they can have an environmental impact they want to but they just don't know how you know so probably someone like me for example uh, i i wouldn't say i'm a real environmental activist but i certainly care about it um and Heck, if I know a simple way that in my everyday life that I can improve, if I can reduce, reuse, or recycle, uh, heck, I'm, I, I like to think that I'll put that into, into implementation, right? So this is the point A. Um, and so they're a bit uneducated in this sense. They're a bit ignorant when it comes to sustainability. And so the point B of their customers is environmentally conscious and educated environmentally conscious and educated so if we think on a big picture level patagonia as a company their entire purpose is to bring their customers from point a to point b that's where the value is it's in the transformation and so their entire purpose as a company is to bring transformation so you need as a company you need to forget about the fact that you're selling clothing again Clothing is a means to an end. Clothing is a vessel to which you can, it's simply an expression of, it's one expression of your true purpose as a company, if you're doing this whole business thing correctly. And and I, like when people say to me, like, there's no right way to do things, I think that's the biggest BS ever. I mean, yes, there absolutely is a right and wrong way to do things. Sure, there's there's room for movement uh, in between there, but like quite honestly if, if, if like people that are in business just to make a buck are in it for the wrong reason that i think that is a wrong way to do things however if you if you're in business to bring transformation bring real value that's going to do a positive work for this world you truly believe in it and you 
earn lots of money, you get rich as anything so that you can fund that mission better, that is the right way to be in business. So let me just be clear. Like I do believe there is a wrong way to do things. I do believe there is a wrong way. It's not just like whatever. It's not just like whatever you want to do. It's not just each to their own. Like heck no. Like we affect each other. Our actions have consequences on each other. Capitalism has consequences when it's bad. When it's good, it's amazing. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about positive capitalism here where, where the right people get rich and do good things with their money. Patagonia's value that they're bringing is, is, is taking people from environmentally ignorant to environmentally conscious and educated, and, and they start a movement in the way that they, they go and they outwork positive acts in the environment. That is the whole purpose for their brand. Now, where does their clothing product come into play into this? Their product is simply the uniform that their customers put on to represent that identity. That's it. It's a uniform. It's uniform. Uniforms are necessary. Why do policemen wear uniforms? Because when people see them in the street, they associate them with a particular idea, right? It, like it, if, if, if the policemen are good, you know, in, in a good place, if you have good policemen in your area, and I really hope you do, then the idea that they'll represent is justice, authority, and fighting against evil. That's what policemen should represent. That's what that uniform should represent. Unfortunately, sometimes it's misrepresented, but that's besides the point. Uniform is important because it informs our identity. It's like when you if, when you go out to a party or, or you go out to a dinner party and, and you put on a suit or you put on that dress and you feel stunning. You feel like a star. There's a confidence in your step. There's something in your voice. Why? Because uniform is important. Who we believe we are affects what we do. And that is what that is where the product comes into play for Patagonia, for your brand, for whatever. Your transformation that you're bringing to your customers is different. It's not going to be you know, some environmental tra- transformation within your customers. But, but, but understand the point that that for Patagonia it is. Their point A is environmentally ignorant, point B is environmentally conscious, and then when they put on the Patagonia garment and they wear that logo proudly on their chest, they become though that person that is environmentally conscious. Even if they're not there yet, they start acting like they are. And that's how you bring transformation. Um, but here's the thing. It doesn't happen in and of itself. Just because you say, just because you have it written down on a sheet of paper, your brand identity or somewhere hidden on your about page on your website that no one reads, that you're a brand that helps people be unique, doesn't mean that you're a brand that does that. Like, let me say it like this. If you don't do that, you don't do that. Or if you don't do that, you're not that. You want to say what I'm saying? That, that there's a lot of companies out there that say they're one thing and do another. They say they bring their customers transformation in, in like like a really common one that I hear all the time is the brand that is helping uh, customers be unique, right? That is that is their whole brand identity. It's like become unique, become rare, right? I've heard that one recently. Great brand identity, by the way, fantastic for your brand if you actually bring that transformation. So you just saying that doesn't mean that's true. It's only true when you make it true. So the question is, how do you actually get them from point A to point B? Here's the answer. Make your social media page a resource of transformation. Make it a resource for transformation. What's going to happen? If you successfully make your your page a resource for transformation in the way that your brand uniquely transforms customers and brings value to this world, then people are going to represent that trans. Sorry, people are going to associate that transformation with your brand name and with that symbol and with that product. That's what a brand is: the association of two or more things. You associate your name, Patagonia, with your transformation, environmentally ignorant to environmentally conscious. That's how it goes. Now, what does this look like for Patagonia? They post education for everyday people about how to be more environmentally conscious. 
That's a resource for transformation. They inspire you with stories of environmental activists that are doing things in their world, like amazing things in their world to make to 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 save this planet. Again, it's a resource for transformation. Let me break this down really clear. If you if this is at all resonating with you and you think, "Yes, I want to do this, but I don't know how." Let me break this down super clear. There's three main ways that you can bring value. Again, remember when I say value, I'm talking about the transformation that you're bringing, the problem that you're solving. Because your customer point A, where your customers are right now is an issue. They don't want to be there. They want to be transformed. They want to be become someone, they want to become someone that they're not. So that's what I'm saying. Transformation equals value. Now there's three ways to bring value through your content. Number one, entertain. Number two, inspire. Number three, educate. Now let me break this down how you can transform people through these three types of content. First of all, you entertain. So with whatever your brand identity is, you get them interested. Make them laugh. Show them something that resonates. I was just speaking to someone recently and and um, a brand owner um, who's who's in my program and she she has this fantastic idea. She creates fitness clothing for modest women and, and mainly Muslim women. Um, and so her entertainment content is is sharing relatable things for muslim women like th- like um five things people say to me as a w- muslim in public you know or something like that and and so if you're a muslim person you you watch this and you go oh yeah i've heard that before you know someone making a comment about the clothes that they're wearing or asking a question that's kind of silly or has some underlying you know like whatever it is. so that's entertaining what is that doing there's women who 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 associate resonate with this brand this identity right and it's getting them interested by entertaining them second you inspire them and this is motivating them to want to change this is where you say hey it doesn't have to be like this people say this about you and this restricts you from being a to, to to following a fitness journey because you feel that you as a modest woman there is no clothing out there that allows you to, to chase fitness okay you can change it doesn't have to be like this and you inspire them to want to change how do you do that well in the example of this brand i would be sharing stories about women who were once in the point a of the customers restricted um, they they can't do any fitness because there's nothing there's no clothing out there that allows them to to point B free fit they and they can still retain their modesty right this is this is the point B this is the transformation this that is, that is being brought to the customers that is inspiring me to to see women doing that is inspiring me to want to change because I realize that I can and then finally number three the third type of content education show them how to change show them how to change it's how to's it's tutorials it's information and in doing these three things you create a resource for transformation for your customers number one you entertain you get them interested then you inspire them to want to change and then you educate them and show them how to change and you actually create real change and in the process again how does your how's your product work How's your product worked into this? Your product is a means to an end. It is not the end. Your product is not the point. So stop pretending, stop marketing it like it's the point. It's not. It's not the point. The product is simply a means. It's a uniform for this transformation. And so if you were inspiring people, if you were educating people, getting them interested, inspiring them to want to change and showing them how to change, there's going to be people that come along that resonate deeply with this, that experience real change and real transformation in their lives, that actually get real value from your company existing. And as a result, they're, they're going to pledge loyalty to you and your brand. Why? Because that's just what happens. That's what happens. 
If you bring transformation and you bring real value, they're going to resonate with your brand deeper than they do just any old product because your 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 t-shirt, your pants, your hoodie is not just any old product anymore. It's a uniform for their transformation. It's a uniform for their identity. That is a higher level offer than just, hey, this is good quality. This is high GSM. That's a higher level offer that someone is willing to pay more, to, to, to make more sacrifice for. And, and, and it's something that quite simply other brands, your once competitors, cannot compete with anymore. Why? Because once upon a time you were competing by the, the product that you're selling. So you both sell hoodies, which, which are both good quality, which both have competitive prices. You're competing, but you're not selling hoodies anymore. You're selling a uniform, you're, you're selling an identity. And that other brand doesn't have anything to do with that identity. So for, for customers that resonate with this identity and want to see this transformation in their lives, there is no competition. You are a category of one, the no-brainer option. So, so this is the business case. This is how you become, this is how you do good and become rich in the process. And use that money to do more good, right? That's the point of all this. Let me give you an, another example of transformation. Nike. What is it? Point A. Every day, average everyday fitness people. That is the point A of their customers. So they, they go on runs. They go for the gym. They're nothing serious. What's the point B? High level athletes. That is the transformation that Nike brings to their customers. Now, does that mean that everyone that wears and buys Nike is going to become a high level athlete? No. However, they get to feel like one for a day when they put on the swoosh logo. Among their friends, they get to be considered a little more serious than the other runners in their group because they're wearing the swoosh logo. Like we all know that you are, you've got a level above if you're wearing Nike instead of New Balance. Yeah, New Balance has got some status in, in streetwear now, but like I'm talking in the world of fitness, New Balance is a bit of a dad brand. <laughs> I mean, sorry, apologies to all the dads out there. You know, I mean, heck, maybe that's that's why you wear the brand because you're a dad and that's the identity that you want to represent. What I'm saying is it's not exactly the high-level athlete brand. Everyone knows that. How, do, how does everyone just intuitively know that? Why? Because Nike has become a company that is a resource for transformation. They show people by educating them, getting them interested, inspiring them to change, and showing them how to become that high-level athlete, even if not everyone becomes it, even if a very small fraction. Right, we're talking about, I mean, I spoke about this last episode, create a brand for the 1%, for the most loyal of your customers. Other most loyal customers gonna wanna be high-level athletes? Probably. Probably, not everyone will, but create a brand for them. Bring transformation to them, and then everyone else will follow. I need to find this um, recording that I made this week because I said something, and I, I, I need to. I said I need to get that down. I need to make sure it's the one before I show you. Okay, this is it. Because sometimes I put some interesting things on my voice members. I don't want to accidentally play the wrong thing, right? So this is this is what I say. Um, I can't if I can even remember what I was talking about. Yeah, this is what I have to say about loyal customers and and the rest. Because not everyone's a loyal customer. Like, you're never going to have loyal customers. Like, all loyal customers, sorry. Here's what I say. I don't deny the fact that most people don't care about your brand and its message and its story. But the ones that count are the ones that do. And the ones that do care bring in the ones that don't. There you go. So some people come up to me and they say, Elijah, my customers don't care about my brand story, my brand message. Dude, for the most part, they won't. For the most, like literally 90% of your customers aren't going to, aren't going to give a hoot about your brand message, about your brand story. But those, how did I say it again? 
It was so good. I thought it was good. I know things that do end its message and its story. But the ones that count are the ones... That yeah, the ones that count. The, the, the customers that count are the ones that do care. Now, what do I mean by the customers that count? I mean the customers that bring in... The, the, the 20% of your customer base that brings in 80% of the revenue. I'm talking about those ones that, that are there every drop. I'm talking about your most loyal ones. They are the ones that count. So the ones that count are the ones that do care about your brand message. And the ones that do care are the ones that bring in those that don't. Right? So even though you don't care about the transformation that Nike brings and you don't care about being a high-level athlete or whatever, Jimmy over here does. Jimmy over here is a loyal customer to Nike, and you see Jimmy wearing the Nike shoes. So you're going to go buy some now too. Because Jimmy brings in the ones that don't care. Why? Because we, we want to be friends with Jimmy, right? If I'm into fitness. Finally, I think I've got time for one more example. Euphoric 777. This is a mental health brand. What's their transformation? Point A, bad mental health and unmotivated. Point B, happy, peaceful, at ease. How do they do this? On their page, they literally post carousels about educating people about mental health. Again, their page becomes a resource for transformation. So my question to you is, what do you want your customer transformation to be? It's not like fitness. It's not like clear before and after. Right? You're fat, now you're skinny. It's not the same as that. However, there is a, a true identity transformation and as a result, an action transformation that can take place. If you have no idea, ask yourself, what, what are the actions that people are doing in this world that needs to, to, to change? And what's the identity transformation that needs to change before? There's a lot of research that says our actions change as a result of our, our identity. Or we act as who we, th who we believe we are. So a, a big thing for anyone dealing with addiction, and I don't know, this might there's there's a lot of listeners right now, I can guarantee that are dealing with addiction. This is a touchy subject. I'm I'm I have quite an addictive personality, and over the years I've de dealt and overcome many addictions. Many addictions of all different kinds. Sexual addictions to um to screen time addictions, you know, social media addictions to so many, so many things, right? I, I have an addictive personality. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of those truths because I know this is going to help someone, like in business, but even on a personal level. So, those things have been true to me. The the, the key to overcoming those was not changing my actions. Well, it was changing my actions, but but before it was changing my actions, it was changing my identity. It's like yes. It's going from talking about myself like I'm an addict to I'm I'm productive. For example, right? So so if I have a problem with, with screen time, if I have a problem with uh, staying on my phone too much, it was only when I changed my mindset from I'm lazy to I'm a productive person that my actions followed. In my screen time usage, for example. So, make your customers believe that they are someone and they will act, their actions will follow. And that's, that is the purpose of your product. That is the purpose of your business. So my question, my other question for you is how are you going to entertain, inspire and educate to bring about that transformation? Whatever your transformation will be. Oh, this was a good episode. I'm really happy with this. I'm really, um, I feel this really heavily. So, and I'm really happy. So I, I really hope this was valuable to you today. Uh, if it was, please let me know. And and look, I, I realize that I never really asked people to do this, but um, heck, if, if this podcast, if you found any value from this podcast ever, please leave me a rating on wherever you're watching or listening this on listening to this on. I know a lot of people watch on YouTube. Others are on podcasts. Others are on Spotify. Others on, are on Amazon or I don't know where. So all I ask is that wherever you're listening, leave a like or 
rate the podcast if you can. I would really appreciate that because, again, my mission is to bring transformation to clothing brands to start building communities because I believe that makes our world a better place. I want more clothing brands to hear this so that we can have a greater impact on the world. That's the truth. That is the depths of my intention. That is the depths of my intention. So help me reach the people, share it with someone. Do you know a clothing brand? Are you friends with someone in business? Do you have a colleague? Share this podcast with them because we need to change the world. This world is sad. It's lonely. It needs you and it needs your clothing brand to build communities. It needs businesses that are going to create real transformation in the world. And the way that we do that, the vessel by which we do that is through communities. Why? Because there is belonging, there is accountability, and there's progression. Progression is the result of belonging and accountability. And progression is a good thing in the world. You get my point. Please leave a leave a, a five-star rating, leave a like, or, or share this with a friend or all of the above. I would really appreciate that. Um, and not just for me, but but because we can... You can, you can have a hand in actually seeing this good work come to pass. So thanks very much for watching and listening this episode of Street Cred. I hope you found it valuable. I hope that maybe you got a step closer to transformation. And you're, I mean, transformation is a continuous process. That's the truth. It's forever. It's not, you, you aren't done transforming. So I hope that you transformed a little bit more today as a result of this episode. And, and, and maybe that this podcast and this resource that I'm creating can be an example for you for exactly what I'm talking about. I like to think that I lead by example and not just talking about it. Well, this is me talking about it is me actually doing it in this case, because this is the transformation through my podcast. So anyway, I think you understand what I'm saying. Thanks very much for for watching. I'll see you next week. I'm Elijah Delport. This is Street Cred. Bye for now.